Hello everyone, it's Kevin and welcome back to another one-stop programming video for absolute beginners on Python. In the last tutorial, we went over user input and types. And in this video, we're going to go over booleans and conditionals. So we're not actually going to start out using the PyCharm IDE, we're going to start out in the Python console. So I'm going to, going to go ahead and launch that using the method we talked about in the last video. I'm just going to type Python down here and launch the desktop app and voila, I have the Python console. So in the last video, I introduced the string type and the integer type. And now I'm going to introduce a third type, which is the Boolean type. Now the Boolean type is very simple, but critical. The Boolean type can either be true or it can be false. Those are the logical values that are stored within a Boolean. Now in Python, a Boolean is expressed with an uppercase letter, either uppercase true, with an uppercase T, or uppercase false with an uppercase F. For example, true and false. So we get our Boolean value of true and our Boolean value of false. Now that's all well and good, but we need to be able to operate on our Boolean values to be able to get anything out of them. That's what makes programming so exciting, is we can, you know, operate on these Boolean values. And if we couldn't do that, you know, we wouldn't be able to do anything, let alone turn our computers on. How do we operate? How do we compare our Booleans together? We do those with what are called logical operators, and there's quite a few of them. We've got equals, not equals, less than, greater than, less than or equal to, and greater than or equal to. So let's jump right in and play around with those. Let's start with the equals logical operator. So let's start with true equals true. Note that I'm using double equals here, and I'm going to explain why in a second. If I press enter, I get true back. This is just a, a, you know, a fundamental truth with these basic Boolean uh, logical operations here. True equals true that is true and we return true here. So we can think of this whole statement as simplifying to just the single boolean of true. Keep that in mind as we go forward. You know, this simplifying and becoming a single boolean value. All right, so next let's use the not equals to operator. So let's do true does not equal false. And that's true. True is not the same thing as false. So we get the result back of true. Now what if we tried true equals equals false? We get false back because that's just not true. Why are we using the equals equals operator here? What would happen if I tried to say true equals true? What do we think is going to happen? If you said it's going to blow up, you're correct. It blew up. Now, why did it blow up? Well, it says we have a syntax error. Can't assign to keyword. Well, what does that mean? So we have the keywords here, true and true. And as we saw in the previous video, we can do things like my var equals one. We're going to assign the value of one into this variable called my var using the assignment operator, which is the single equal sign. So what this really means is it's trying to assign the Boolean value of true into, through the assignment operator, the keyword of true. And it's saying, I can't change the meaning of true. You know, I could have also tried to say true equals false which would be basically trying to say, I want to change all of the instances of true to false, which just wouldn't make sense, so it doesn't let you do it. Uh, and thankfully, it doesn't let you do that, because that would be really weird. So that's why we use the double equals operator, because we already use the single equals for assignment. All right, so let's mess around with some of the other logical operators. So with the less than and greater thans and equals twos, Let's just start off with a really hard one. A less than B. Now you're probably saying, Kevin, I don't even like 
you're trying to less than or uh, two letters like what, what are you even trying to do of course that's not going to work turns out that's true um and now you're probably like well how is that true what on what basis of fact is that well turns out that letters are actually just numbers uh if you are talking to the computer the letter doesn't or the computer doesn't care that this is you know a string it's gonna try to compare it using its actual uh numeric representation now this is kind of confusing so don't try to extrapolate this into other aspects but this is useful in that you can compare strings knowing this and by referencing the ascii values of characters which you, you can get by going to ascii or you know just googling ascii values so if we look over here in this far right hand column we see that we've got a and we've got b and we see over here in this left hand part the decimal dec value of a is 97 and the decimal value of b is 98. so we go back to python here we see that 97 is less than 98. That's true. And that's basically what that's doing here. Um, you can use this to your advantage for sorting uh, strings, um, but we're not going to get into any more of that right now. We're going to just use numbers going forward. So one less than one, that's false because one isn't less than one. One is equal to one. One less than zero, also false because one is greater than zero. One less than two. Yes, two is larger than one, is therefore less than one, so we have true. Now we could do one is less than or equal to one, and that's true. Conversely, we could do one is greater than one, false for the same reason it's equal to one, so it can't be greater than it if it is equal. Or we could do one greater than two, also false. And I think you guys get the idea and I, I won't go on, but I will show you the one less than or equal to one operator. And that is true. Now, what would happen if I wanted to compare more than one of these at the same time? What if I wanted to do multiple Boolean operations, multiple logical operations at once? Simple, you can just use the Python keywords and, and or. Sorry if that was confusing. And slash or. Let me show you what I mean. True equals true and true. So what this is going to do is this is going to evaluate this first and say, is true logically equal to true? It is, so this will evaluate to true. And then we're gonna do a logical and with the value of true. So and basically means if the value on the left is true and the value on the right is true, then this whole thing will simplify to true. I press enter and that's, that's correct. If I did the same thing but and false, that's false. Conversely, I could try or, and that's true because it's going to evaluate true equals true, which is true, and it's going to be like true or, well, it's true, so it's not even going to evaluate this false part because it already knows it's true. Conversely, if I had true equals false or false, that will be false because both sides of the or do evaluate to false. So I could go on forever and ever with different comparisons and Boolean expressions, but that would take a very long time as you can take entire courses on Boolean expressions and simplification. We've already spent 10 minutes on this. We're gonna go in and we're going to jump in to making our calculator be able to utilize what we've just learned.
let's modify our calculator to ask the user what it wants to do, whether we want to add, subtract, multiply, or divide, and then use conditionals and booleans to only do what they want to do. So I'm going to introduce three more keywords as we're programming here. So bear with me. If you're confused, please feel free to watch the last couple minutes again uh, and, and try to get a better understanding of what the Booleans are doing and how they simplify. Let's ask the user, after we get num1 and num2, let's ask them what they want to do. So let's call this operation equals input. What do you want to do? And we'll give them options of add, subtract, multiply, and divide. OK. So now we're going to ask the user what they want to do. And we're going to give them you know, the options that we have available in our calculator. Now we need to check what the value of operation is. So we're going to do an if operation equals logical equals using two equal signs the string add then we're going to put a colon and we're going to go onto a new line and this will need to be indented notice pycharm does this for us we will do our print add num1 and num2 so let's go ahead and delete that new line and so now we have if operation is equal to add, print, add num1, num2. So I'm going to go on to a new line, and I'm going to backspace. So now I'm on the original indentation level with the if. And I'm going to type l if, e l i f, and then in parentheses, operation equals equals, quote, subtract. And on the outside of the quote, colon, new line. And actually, I'm just going to bring up our subtract from down here. And it, notice it will indent it automatically for us in line with that pr the previous print from add. Notice how these are indented on the same line. So then we're going to hit enter again. We're going to do L if a third time. This time, we're going to do operation equals equals multiply don't forget a colon after that onto a new line and we'll bring up our uh, multiplication print statement we're going to do another l if for operation equals equals divide we're not going to forget the colon we're going to indent our divide now we're going to do one last keyword out on this original indentation level with our ifs and elifs, and that's else, colon. And notice how we're not doing a Boolean evaluation. This is basically, you know, if any of these things up here are not true, we are going to print, I don't understand, because they typed something that our calculator doesn't know how to do. Let's review this real quick. If operation is add, we're going to print add. Else if, that's what elif means, operation equals subtract, we'll print our subtraction. Elif operation is multiply, we'll print our multiplication. Elif operation divide, we'll print divide. Else literally any other input, we're going to print I don't understand. Now let's go ahead and run that real quick and make sure it works. What is number one? It's five. What is number two? It's also five. What do we want to do? Let's add, so I'll type ADD. I'll press enter and we're going to get 10. If I run this again and I type what is number one, 10 and 12, press enter. Let's subtract get negative two, which is our expected result. And it looks like our calculator is working and you know, much more interactive with the user. Let's try it one more time with some gibberish. What is number one, 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 and then some gibberish. 
I don't understand. Oshkoshkoshkoshkoshkoshkoshkoshkoshkoshkoshkoshkoshkoshkoshkoshkoshkoshkoshkoshkoshkoshkoshkoshkoshkoshkoshkoshkoshkoshkoshkoshkoshk